This video is going to talk about uh, graphing linear inequalities on a coordinate plane and how it's slightly different than graphing it on a number line. We're going to have to shade a region of the graph uh, for solutions that are true um, and hopefully solutions that aren't true won't get shaded and we'll have a difference between whether we use a dashed line or a dotted line. So let's start with an example here. Negative 2x is less than 6. Uh, so first we always got to solve for a variable, right? Um, so to divide by negative 2 will give us x. Remember if I divide by a negative I have to flip my sign. So x is now greater than 6 divided by negative 2 which is negative 3. So this is talking about an x value. We need to find it on the x-axis. So find negative 3 on the x-axis is right there. That must be part of our line. And if we're talking about just x equals or x is greater than or less than, uh, any equation that just has an x and then a solution is always talking about a vertical line. Because all we're talking about is values that equal or um, in some way relate to negative 3. So it's basically anything, anything, whoops, that's the wrong type of line. So I already messed up. Anything at negative 3. And uh, if, if it's just an inequality that's greater than or less than, we use a dashed line. I always just want to draw a solid line, but you got to think about um, whether this has a an or equal little mark below it or not and if it doesn't have it you gotta use the dashed the dashed line so a dashed line at negative three that represents a greater than or a less than inequality so now we know our, where our line is let's talk about solutions to this inequality um, talking about any value that's greater than negative 3 well any x value greater than negative 3 would be to the right so we're gonna shade basically this entire region because anything in this region is a true solution to our inequality and a good way to test that out is to use a test solution we'll pick anything that is in the shaded region and test it and see if it's true. I'm going to use uh, 3. 3 is greater than negative 3, so that's a true statement. It should be in the shaded region. Uh, 10. 10 is greater than negative 3. It's a true statement, so it should be in the shaded region. Let's see if uh, we made it over here, if we didn't shade the right part. Negative 7. Negative 7, is that greater than negative 3? No. So it shouldn't be shaded. And then we didn't shade it. Negative 9. Negative 9 is not greater than negative 3. So that would be an untrue, untrue statement. It should not be shaded. Okay. So doing little test solutions always helps you check whether you shaded the right portion or not. Um, let's do another example here. Let's talk about a horizontal line. Um, remember that horizontal lines are y equal equations. So if we're given an example like this, and we need to solve for y, we would divide by 3. So y would be less than or equal to 7. Okay, well, a y equation, basically, without a slope, uh, tells us that it's a horizontal line. So we need to find where y equals 7. On the y-axis, talking about y values, there's y um, equals 7. So we know our line is going to be a horizontal line through 7. Uh, but now we got this or equal sign. So now we're going to use a solid line when we draw it. And we're going to draw it through the point where y equals 7 continues in both directions. 
but we specifically want to talk about values for y that are less than or equal to 7. So the or equal is the, the solid line, just like the or equal is a uh, solid dot, not an open dot, right? And we're going to shade any value that is true for less than 7. Any y value less than 7 would be below. So we would have to shade this entire region. Now when you shade a region, obviously this is slightly sloppy, but it still gives us an idea of a shaded region. You could use the side of your pencil. That helps to give a quick shade. Um, or you could use a highlighter or whatever you want to do to darken a region or shade it. Um, and now let's do a little test. Let's make sure we shaded the right part. So three, we shaded that so that should be a true solution. Uh, is three less than or equal to seven? Well, three is less than seven, so that's true. Um, what about negative three? Negative three is definitely less than seven, so it should be in the shaded region. What about the unshaded region? That should not be a solution. So nine, is nine less than seven? No, so it shouldn't be shaded. Um, anything above that? 11. Is 11 less than 7? No. Well, it shouldn't be shaded. All right. Um, let's talk about other types of lines. So that was a horizontal line, and before that was a vertical line. Let's talk about um, lines that might have a slope. So we're going to add another variable to our equation. Um, let's try y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 4. So we graph this the same way we would if this were an equal sign. This is in slope intercept form. So this is still our y intercept. So find where the y value is 4. Well right there. We know that is a point on our line. Now use your slope to figure out other points on the line. Well a negative x really is a negative 1. That negative 1 right there is the slope. So we go down 1 over one, down one, over one, down one, over one. And when we're graphing inequalities, it's always best to give us the full line because we're going to have to shade a portion. So you might as well just know exactly where you're going to cut off your shading all the way across the graph. So this happens to have a negative slope right um, so the way to know what portion you need to shade or um, which solutions are going to be true for this equation if you have a negative slope um, you could think about it this way if you have a y is greater than or equal to with a negative slope you're gonna shade um, you're gonna shade above the line or to the right of the line, whatever makes more sense to you. So because this is a y is greater than or equal to, and I have a negative slope, well then this is what I do. I shade to the right or above the line. Sometimes saying above the line or below the line doesn't make much sense if the slope is too extreme. So to the right if it's greater than. Um, and opposite of that would be if we had a y is less than or equal, it doesn't matter if the or equals there or not, it's still the same rule. If we got a less than, we would shade uh, below the line, if that doesn't make enough sense to the left of the line. And that's both for negative slopes only. Um, so let's make sure we shade it in the right spot, because sometimes these rules don't make enough sense, or sometimes they're too confusing, or sometimes in the, the stressful moment of a test you um, you don't believe yourself or you don't remember it right and you want to double check. So the best way without memorizing these rules is just to do a test solution every time. All right, to do a test solution. Test out a coordinate pair. So if it's in the shaded region here, um, then it must make this equation true. So let's try one out. Let's try 4, 2. That's a point in our shaded region, so 
hopefully if we plug those values in, it will make this statement true, and we'll know that we shaded the right portion. So I'm going to try out 4, 2 as a coordinate pair, and I'm going to substitute that for my, my x and my y values. So positive 2 is greater than or equal to negative 1 times 4 plus 4 substituting the x and y values. So hopefully 2 is greater than or equal to whatever we get on the right side. Well negative 1 times 4 is a negative 4 and negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Well is 2 greater than or equal to 0? Yeah. So this statement is true. Well, that must mean that this coordinate is in the shaded region or that must mean that this coordinate pair is a true solution to this statement. Let's try one that shouldn't be true. Let's try 1, 1. I didn't shade that, so it should not be true. Let's check it out here. Um, we're, testing, we're testing 1, 1 as our x and y values. So 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1 times 1 plus 4. This should not be true. Let's see. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And 1, is that greater than or equal to 3? Well, 1 isn't. So, yeah, we shaded in the right part. This shouldn't be a solution. This other one should be. We always want to shade the region that makes our statement true or shade the region that gives us solutions that make this statement true. All right, let's try uh, one with a positive slope and talk about the rules there. Hopefully I can finish in the next few minutes here. Our example is um, y is less than or equal to x plus 2. So remember, start at 2. And this is a positive slope. We go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And give, us, give yourselves the best representation of this line all the way across the graph so that you can shade ooh. shade the other portion um, okay so we're talking about a positive slope now let's talk about rules on knowing which one to shade which region to shade with positive slopes if y is uh, greater than or equal to you're going to shade above or to the left of your line. Well, that's not what this is. So let's talk about if it's a less than or equal to, doesn't matter. You're going to shade below or to the right of your line. So this is a less than statement, so true solutions should be in this portion of my graph. Shade all of this, darken it, shade it however you want to think about it. And if, again, if you can't remember these rules, I don't really think about these rules. I always just use a test solution. So let's try one out. So things that are shaded should be true. Let's try, let's try 2, 1. All right, so I'm going to try 2, comma 1, substitute those x and y values, and see what we get here. So 1 is less than or equal to 2 plus 2. Is 1 less than or equal to 4? Yeah, so it should be shaded. It should be in the shaded region. So we're close. Let's just make absolute sure. Let's test a solution that's not in our shaded region. Excuse me. There's negative 3, 1. Negative 3, 1 is our x and y. Let's throw it in the equation and see what happens. 1. Is that less than or equal to negative 3 plus 2? Well, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And 1, is that less than or equal to negative 1? No, 1 is greater than. So this should not be in the shaded region. Well, it's not. So we know we're right. We shaded the right portion. These are not solutions. These are true solutions. All right, so hopefully that helps you graph linear inequalities. See you in the next video.